What you want? What's the matter, Tom? Ain't nothing the matter. You puffed up because Sissy put you down for a 10? Is she done stuck me for a 10? Yes, yeah, on that school subscription. Is that what you two were talking about all that time over at your house? Exactly. Now, the proposition is this. Yeah? I've made a deal with Henry Hooker, the banker, to buy the Thomas place south of town to build a school on. So I've raised a hundred dollars. That is, when you kick in with that 10, Sissy put you down to pay. Oh. So if you'll come across, you can come with me down to the bank to make the payment and get the contract. Well, uh, let me see how I'm fixed here. Get myself together and see how near I can get to it, Checker. I'm a little short anyway. Hello, boys. How do you do, Mr. Hooker? How do you do, Mr. I just listened to a sermon on Christianizing Africa by the Reverend Blackwater, a preacher who is truly a man of God. Oh, we must help men like Reverend Blackwater bring these heathen savages into the faith of God. Amen. Very true and very fine, Mr. Hooker. But what about the black heathens of the South? They're both civilized and Christianized. Yet live a life of misery in many places. Hooker's been included until it's pitiful to behold. What about it, Mr. Hooker? That may not be your burden, you an American citizen, but it's somebody's burden to try to improve this condition. And I have therefore dedicated my life to the task. Accordingly, I'm here to see you about that deal. You came to see me about that land, Peter. Yes, sir. I'm very sorry to tell you, Peter, but you're too late for the Tomwood place. How's that? Why, I bought the land. Yeah, but you paid nothing for your option on it, Steiner. Well, I had a clear cut understanding from Mr. Tom Witt. I'll go see Mr. Tom Witt. Uh, it's no use, Peter. I'll explain. Now, uh... Mr. Tom would surprise me too, Peter, but no use talking about it. In the meantime, uh, I don't like to see anything so important as the education of our colored people held up. So I've been trying to do something. So that rather than let your project be delayed, I'm going to offer you the old Delahaye place at exactly the same price, Peter. Eight hundred. Ninety-five, ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one hundred. Oh, thank you, Peter. I like a man of decision. Here's your deed to the Delahaye place. And the deal is closed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Good morning. Good, 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 good morning. Goodbye, sir. Well, that was done proper and to the point, Tom. Like the business proposition should be consummated. Ah, uh, should be what, bro? Well, it was quick, all right. Don't suppose nobody could put a deed over on you with stoppers in it, does you? We didn't know any such word as stop, Tom.
Now, Peter, I know what's the matter. I didn't do you right. Why did you turn down my proposition, Mr. Tomwitz, after we had agreed and drawn up the papers? Well, I had to do it, Peter. Why, Mr. Tomwitz? A white neighbor of mine wanted me to. Who, Mr. Tomwitz? Henry Hooker talked me into it, Peter. It was a mean trick, and I done you wrong. Henry Hooker? You don't mean a cashier at the bank? Yep. There ain't but one Henry Hooker. He's the one and only. He told me if I sold you any of my land that you all would put up a Negro school and bring in so many blackbirds you'd run me clean off my farm. Well, he said it would ruin the whole town, a Negro school would. He didn't talk that way to me. Naturally, naturally. Henry has a different way of talking to every man, Peter. In fact, he just told me old Dilla had place and knew the deal I missed with you. The hell he did? Is that you, Deed? Let me see it. Well, I'll be dang. That little old Henry Hooker always was a snake in the grass. He abused his position of trust. Why do you suppose he bought it in the Tomwood place and sold me the Dillahead track? I wonder, is that little old gimbal-headed white man done put some stoppers in that deed he good view? He might have. Piffle. Tain't piffle. I was talking sense, hi-hat. Stoppers? What do you mean by stoppers? I mean Negro stoppers, you fool. Negro stoppers? Listen, listen to me, hi-hat. I was betting I was right. Let me take a look at that deed. Oh, go on. I faded that deed with a ten spot, and I reckon I got a once-over coming for my money. Oh, disagreement is made the day of the... Something's up. I saw Henry Hooker give signer a paper. They met Tomwood up the street who took the paper, looked at it, said something, then handed it back and walked away. Then Siner and Tump had an argument, and now Tump's are reading the paper. Wonder what it's all about. A dollar to a donut! That Henry Hooker's pulled a fast one on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a Coca-Cola. It is hereby agreed that, uh... Dash yam, dash yam. A Negro stopper and show as you is born. Let me see your mare's name. It's there. Now I reckon you'll understand what a stopper is. Be it further understood and agreed that no Negro, black man, Afro-American, mulatta, quadroon, octoroon, or any person whatsoever of colored blood or lineage shall enter upon, serve, hold, occupy, reside upon, fill, cultivate said property, a garner, cut or harvest therefrom any other use of fresh timber or implements thereof. But shall by these presents be a stop from so doing forever. But well, that can't be legal. Legal? Legal hell. Anything a white man wants to put over on a Negro and a hooker's bin is legal. Through all the schools clean up to Harvard. And then you let a poor white man like Henry Hooker put a fast one over on you. Well, you fool. Yeah. Where you going? Hey, look at Peter. I advise you against anything you fix to do unless you have to pass in your check. Hello, Peter. Here you've been investing in real estate. I advise you against anything you fixing to do. Except Peter. Wait a minute, man. Mr. Hooker. Very busy now, Peter. I, I want to know about this deed. No time to talk about deeds now, Peter. Huh? But, but there's a clause in this time called Beef and Occupy in the place. Precisely. What about it? According to this, I... I can't establish a school on it. You cannot? Then what can I do with it? 
Sell it. I'll give you ten dollars for the option you hold in it. I, uh... You... You mean you're willing to give me only ten dollars of the hundred dollars I paid you not an hour ago? I'm not willing to give you anything, Peter, but I'll do so just to wipe the cloud the deed I gave you holds over it. I, I won't trade. You cheated me. Here's your deed. Stop there, Peter! What's the matter? Oh, Peter there won't stick to his bargain and is walking away with a hundred dollars of the bank's money. Sick of your deal, Peter? Well, what you want done, Henry? Oh, nothing, I suppose. The signer was excited. You, you know how a Negro is. We can't afford to put every one of them in jail and breaks the law. And let me give you a little friendly advice. I'd just run an ordinary school for Negroes if I was you. This higher education that you have don't seem to make you any smarter when you come back than you were before you went away. <laughs> Bob, that was a great sermon the Reverend Blackwater preached. It made me want to help according to the Lord has blessed me. Couldn't you spare five dollars to go along with my contribution? Thanks, Bob. I've got the envelope ready. I'm dropping your five in with mine. Ten dollars more for the great work, the salvation of the black heathens of Africa. Amen. Here. You better uh, have this registered at the post office as you pass by, Bob. Good morning, Bob. It brings out what most of we Southerners argue, that you can't educate a Negro. He can be taught lines like an actor in a play, but he seldom understands what they mean. And Sina is the best sample of it. Hooker sure pulled a fast one on him. He'd have a hard time living that down in Hooker's Bend. Negroes ain't got much confidence in each other nohow. And this'll about wash educated Negroes up as leaders with them. It'll limit them to preaching and teaching. And I reckon this'll about finish Sina's theory of higher education.
keep you up there in school, you come back here and let a poor white man make a fool of you. Now everybody's laughing at us, both of us. Hello? Hello, sissy. Hello. Would you come in? <coughs> Here's some cookies, Mr. Sina. I thought you and Aunt Caroline. Yeah, I imagine they for me. Might like them. Sonny don't want no light, light thinking of husband running after my son. And the whole down even family of them, they're watching. Won't you come in? Why, no, uh, I just came by to... Just play yourself in a pretty boy's face, cause he's done been off and got me a fool of. I'd better go now. Wait, oh wait, Christine, until I get my hat, I'll go with you. Poor dear, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Your mother certainly hates me, Peter. No, it's me. She's terribly let down about that deal. Your own mother turned against you. I don't blame her in a way. It seems so stupid of me. The man seems so, so sympathetic that I wasn't expecting a trick. Of course you wasn't. The whole thing proves that you're a gentleman, used to dealing with gentlemen. But of course these hookers bend Negroes will never be able to see it or try to understand it that way. Still, sissy, I should have used the greatest care. I'm not talking about what you ought to have done, Peter. I'm talking about what you are. Well, one thing is sure. I've lost my prestige, whatever it was worth. With the others, maybe. What are you going to do now? Find a way to get another hundred, I suppose. Read the deed before I do any paying this time. Bravo, Peter. Bravo. I'm not the first man to make a mistake and get beat. That one mistake is not going to stop me. But my this will, you yellow girl. <laughs> But mother, I... Me sweating over the wash tub so you could go north and learn a little sense, only to see you come back home and start chasing a dirty yellow husband. Oh, mother, I was only walking home with Miss Dilding. Miss Dilding, Miss Dilding, if you mean that stuck-up yellow fly-by-night husband, then say so. Don't stand there mouthing Miss Dilding, Miss Dilding. Oh, my boy, my son. Now take a horse. A horse can be trained to add and put his name together out of an alphabet. But no horse could ever write a promissory note or figure the interest on it, sir. I can't see no need of going to school like that, then coming back and letting a white man teach you out your hiding talent, then let a black man beat you till you got to kick him in the spivot. Peter just ain't got it. Peter just ain't got it, man. The Lord Almighty has set his limit on dogs, horses, and Negroes, Mr. Tonwood. Thus far and no further. I seen if education ain't a good at all, you're bound to beat the white man at one end and the black man at the other. And if Peter can't be found at either end, then why is it? I don't know. Hold on, man. Hold on. I have known as intelligent a stallion as any. Now, what about Sina, Miss Gal? What you raising so much dust about? Did you think it was Henry Hooker delivering that land you bought? <laughs> what are you talking about? Does that ought to dust return it? By the way, Peter, you haven't happened to see Tunk back, has you? Is he borrowed a gun from you? <laughs> That's funny. What's funny? I mean about Tunk. Oh, yeah, Tunk. 
I thought he must have borrowed a gun from you, because he left Hobart's corner a while ago with a great big 45, crying where you is. Maybe that them Tunk now. But I guess I was mistook him. Tunk did start over this way with a gun showing up. He met Dawson Bob on the way and... Uh, Where is he now? Locked up? No, not just exactly. All right, all right. Not exactly what did happen. This. Mo Throfman had been trying to hire Tunk to pick cotton. Offered him three dollars a day. But Tunk had just thrown four natural and wouldn't go. So then he gets arrested for can concealed squint jewel. Now Thornton Martin have got him working out his fine and picking cotton for nothing. <laughs> so long. Sissy. Sissy. Oh, Peter. Come around here. Oh, Peter, I'm so glad to see you, although I didn't expect to. Thanks. I came by the news. Bad news, I'm sorry to say. Oh, Peter, what is it? You haven't been... Not that, not that again, Peter. Oh, no, sissy, not that. Of course not that. But it's about Tump. Oh, Tump. Well, what about him? He's been arrested. What, again? But that's not fair. Please come in. Then you can tell me all about it. What did they arrest him for? Carrying a pistol. To shoot you with. Oh, this is sickening, Peter. Sickening. Peter, it's hard to be nice in this place. I just happened to think how folks would gossip about you coming here so soon after Tump was arrested. Perhaps I'd better go. Oh, no. I'm really glad you came. I didn't mean it that way. I've been uneasy about you. I'm not so easy killed. I've completely recovered my equilibrium. I'm determined to see what I have started through. In a way, Peter, we, uh, you and I don't belong here, and we'll never get anywhere as long as we stay here. Why don't you go away, Peter? Away up north, where most of our educated people have gone. Up north, where you can be free. You can't grow up and develop here. They simply won't let you. And especially now, when everyone doubts you. If you go north... What about you, sissy? Oh, I'm a woman. We haven't the chance to do as we want to. Then you're going to stay here and marry Tom? I... I don't know what I'm going to do. God help me. You... you don't care for Tom. North, dear, and soon. Just you and I, Sissy. You and I. Oh, I'll be so glad. So glad. So glad. Well, Mother? Where are you going, son? For a walk, Mother. You go out of that Sissy building, Peter. No, I'm going to walk by myself. I'm tired, played out. Tired? Play it out. You ain't done nothing but sit and turn through some books and write on a little piece of paper. Even that gets tiresome after a while. Peter, you knows if Tom Pack sees you, he's going to shoot you show. Oh, no, I won't. That's Tom's talk. Talk? That ape done got grounded for killing four men already. Hmm. Come in the house, son, and eat some supper. I just made some salmon croquettes for you. That'll spile if you don't eat them now. I didn't know you were making croquettes. Yes, I got a can of samples from Miss Cromwell. That she old man couldn't quite use. Look here, Mother, you're not using old canned goods that have been left over. I've told and told you about using any tainted or impure food that the white people can't eat. It's too bad for them, it's too bad for you. You must absolutely quit eating leftovers. <laughs> Don't be so hasty, Peter, because you done been brought up on leftovers. <laughs> 
That's you, son? Yeah, this me, mommy. What's the matter, dear? Are you sick? I ain't feeling so well. It, it, it's my stomach. My mother, you are sick. What can I do? Here, fill it from the kettle. You need a doctor, and quickly. I'll go for John. Sorry we had a telephone to maybe get him quicker. I'll go now. I'll run. Meantime, I'll go by Nan Berry's and get her to send her here to look after his on your back. If Dr. Jallop should argue, then go see Captain Renfro. You know where he lives. The big house on the hill. My mother's sick, Doctor. Who is it? Caroline Sanders. She's been taken suddenly with... The fat negress that lives in a three-room house on 12th Street, didn't she? I'll show you the way. No, Carolyn Sanders owes me a $5 doctor bill already. Our county medical association has made a rule that no Negro should... For great heavens, Doctor. She's dangerously ill. She might die. I'll pay you. Have you got the money there in your pocket? No, but I can get it. Yes, you can all get it. I'm tired of you Negroes running up doctor bills nobody can collect. You never have any money. Your wages are never large enough to garnish she. No, I'm not going. If you want me to visit her, go get ten dollars. Five for the old debt, the balance for this visit, and I'll... If Dr. Jollop should argue, go see Captain Renfrew. My name is Sander, Peter Sander. My mother's been taken suddenly ill. I've been to Dr. Jallis, but he won't go. Oh, Peter Sander and Caroline is sick. Well, now, that's too bad. Uh, um, they step inside. I'll call up Jallop and have him stop here and pick us up, and we can go and see what's wrong with Caroline. Now, won't you step in, please? She's mighty bad, Doc. Well, well, Caroline, what's this all about? Uh, I, I'm sick, doctor. I'm awful sick. Uh, no, no, Caroline. Don't talk that way. I'm going to fix you up quickly. Quickly. Peter. You mean moral? I see. I was stupid. Well, I'm glad it's over. I'm glad you know. 
You see, Peter, if you had been like Tom Pat or Wince or any of the other boys around here, it, it wouldn't make much difference. But you went off and learned to feel and think like a white man. I, you changed your code, Peter. I don't think that was fair for you to go away and change your code, then come back and judge us according to your new code. You see, Peter, we, we couldn't change ours. We had to stay here, and, and we couldn't change ours. If you didn't know anything about my code, how do you know what I feel now? I found out the other night when you kissed me. It was too late then. Her confession has destroyed all my plans. It has left me as adynamic as my mother's death. It seems there was a certain similarity between the two events. Both were sudden and desolating. And yet, as my mother had vanished utterly from my reach, so now it seems that Sissy is no more. Sissy the clear-eyed. Sissy the ambitious. Sissy the refined has vanished away. And in her place stands a thief, more than a thief. Oh, God, forgive me. Forgive me. Well, you were deliberate in coming. I, uh, I sent you word to some black rascal three days ago. I just got your message today. Well, won't you come in and we can talk this over if you don't mind. I don't mind, Captain. All right, in. I'm growing old, and as a scholar and a thinker, I feel that I should give the fruits of my leisure to the world. That, in short, Peter, is why I've sent for you. I'm deeply gratified. I asked you to come here for another reason. I need a man about this house. Now, that is one phase of the work. The more important work is that you will act as sort of secretary. I, I have a manuscript in the house here. My handwriting is rather difficult. I want you to copy the matter in it and get it ready for the printer. Are you offering me a permanent place, Captain Renfrew? I need a man with a certain liberality of culture. I may, no doubt, get you to look over books and periodicals and make notes of any points germane with my thesis. This is very flattering, Captain, but the fact is I came by your house at this time because I'm just in the act of leaving on the steamboat tonight. You're leaving Hooker's Bend? Yes, sir. Well, why? Well, my mother is dead. Well, I know, but Peter, your work is still here. A man's work, Peter, a man's work. You mean my school teaching? Uh, Peter, I want you to remain with me for another reason. I, I'm an old man, and anything could happen to me in this big house. I, I don't like to think of it. Then you mean you want me to stay with you until, until the end, Captain? That's my desires. And at my death, you'll receive a certain portion of my estate, because I have no other heirs. I am the last of the race of the Renfro, Peter, the last. Well, now, Rose, I have a guest who has come to stay with me permanently. He will perhaps wish his breakfast served in his room. He's in the East Room. Yes, sir. Come in. Is I bringing this breakfast to a Negro? I suppose it's mine. Well, what for? 
What more is you ain't come to the kitchen and eat off from the chef? Is you sick? I've never felt better in my life. Then what the devil has I got into? I ain't gonna walk no such place. Can't breakfast to a beef of a Negro stout as a mule. Say, what you doing here anyhow? How come this? Now, now, Rose. I'm here to do some writing for the captain, another thing. Well, full Lord. When spooks get to write for white folks, ants will be jumping for bullfrogs and having other Negroes wait on them. You just as much spook as I. This is the last mouthful I fetches to you and other jigwalk, Peter Siner. You ain't no black Jesus, even if you is a woods calf. What did you say? You heard me. Yes, I did. And since I can't seem to get along with you by trying to be nice and considerate, I'll... <laughs> Well, it looks like Peter put something over on Tom. Maybe an education does help a Negro some, after all. <laughs> They're telling around town how Peter's gonna marry Tump's girl, while Tump's working out his fine up on your farm. And they're uh, talking about Santa. They say he's living up at uh, old Captain Renfrew's now. Yeah, old Rose Harbett says he's up there doing some kind of writing and living in one of the captain's best rooms. Yeah, that's true. But she could hardly make up a lie like that. The old captain's getting old and childish, and uh, that educated Negroes are taking advantage of it. If old Captain Renfrew wasn't the richest man in this town, we could make up some kind of a charge and take that Negro out of there. I'll tell you, an educated Negro it's dangerous thing to have around. Get off of this line. It's an officer of the law discussing official business with an important man. Yeah, and that's true. I hope it chokes you. Captain Renfrew wants to see you in the library. When, right now? Yeah, right now. Everything he wants, he wants it now. Oh, good evening, Peter. By the way, I, I sent for you. Yes, sir. I believe you wanted me. Oh, yes, Peter. I uh, Downtown, um, I heard a rumor, well, connected with you that uh, I I don't want to intrude on your private affairs. Not at all, not in the least, but uh, are you thinking of leaving me? Why, no, not at all. Who told you I was? Well, to be exact, I heard that you were going to marry. Marry? Whoever in the world could have told you that? Are you? Indeed, no. I heard that you were going to marry a negress here in town called Sissy Dildeen. But I'm not. That's settled. You say that it's settled? Yes. You had thought of it, maybe considered it. Well, at least that eases my mind. It eases my mind. It's uh, not only the thought of losing you, Peter, but this girl that you're thinking of marrying is, hmm, well, let me warn you, she's a negress. A negress? I don't exactly mean a negress. I, she's a thief. And furthermore, she's not a good girl. I couldn't endure seeing you married to a thief. Yes. Yes, uh, I've heard that before. Well, that's all, Peter. Good night. Good night, Captain Winter.
No, he didn't bend the globe because I asked him and he said he didn't. Well, I said I didn't too. He's a Negro like I am. We just two Negroes. And look at here. If you was going to put one of us ahead of the other, it's Katie lock a door with me. Well, what do you mean, Katie lock a door with you? You know what I mean. I mean I was going to leave this place. No, no, look here, Rose. Peter Siner occupies almost a fiduciary relation to me. A relation of yours? Well, yes, Peter Siner occupies a position of trust with me. Yeah. I see you trust him. Someday he's going to be of service to me, of great service to me. You know better than anybody else, Rose, my dread of some unmannerly death. Aye. And Peter has promised to remain with me until the end. Which end? Which end? Yeah, your end or Peter's end. By every law of probability, Peter will outlive me. Yeah, Peter'll come to an end with you when he marries that stuck-up, yellow fly-by-night sissy Dildine. But he's not going to marry her. He told me he didn't intend to marry her. Good Lord, what difference does it make what Peter say? Ain't you found out when a he-negro and a she-negro get to peeping at each other, what they say don't live in the same neighborhood, but what they does? <laughs> no, that'll do, Rose, that'll do. That's all I need of you. Pardon my intrusion, Peter, but I'd like to have a word with you. I... Uh, I've mentioned this subject before. Yes, sir. It's about Sissy Dildeen. Yes, sir, you mentioned that before. P Listen, Peter, you don't want to do what's on your mind. What's on my mind? Marry a negress. You don't want to marry a negress. Not marry a negress? No, Peter, no. For yourself, it may make no difference, but your children, think of your children. Your son's growing up under a brown veil, a veil that you can't tear off, that God himself can't tear off. Your children, Peter, your children's children, a terrible procession, stretching out, out, a marching on under a dark shroud, unknowing, unknown. And all you can see, Peter, is their sad forms beneath the shroud, marching away, away to God knows where. And yet, it's your own flesh and blood. But, Captain, whom should I marry? No one, Peter. Let your seed wither in your loin. It is better that way. It's better. You don't seem to be very glad to see me, Peter. 
But I am sissy. Very glad. What a wonderful room. It is very nice. And what beautiful drapes. Are they below? I wonder how they would look spread. Perhaps I'd better build a fire. Oh, no. I'm just going to stay a few minutes. I don't know what you'll think of me, Peter. I'm really glad you came. Are you, Peter? I really came by to ask you to help me. I want you to help me go away. They have no feeling for a colored girl, Peter. No, not a speck. When one of us even walks past on the street, they whistle and say all kinds of things out loud, just as if we weren't there at all. They, they don't care. We're just, just colored women. Oh, oh, they make you feel naked. <laughs> oh, sissy, please. She's there, Mr. Bob. I just now see the gold in. Oh, all right, come on. All right, we'll wait here until she comes out and then nab her. But I don't want to travel alone, Peter. I don't want to go away alone. You mean you want me to go with you, sister? Oh, listen, you black rascal. If that gal gets away from me tonight, there'll be a dead persimmon in the morning. Now get on up there, you baboon, and see if she's still there. Listen, Peter, I'm not the kind of woman you think. The whole town thinks. If I hadn't accused myself, we'd be married now. I've done some things that I regret and I'm ashamed of because I've stolen. I stole a check of roaster and brought you something nice to eat in. And I stole a brooch because you said I needed one. And I wanted to look nice to please you. But that is all the sin I've committed. I raise my hand and swear that is all, Peter. But I know all Hooker's been is calling and pointing me out as the town's worst woman. And I can't stand it any longer. I've got to go away. There, there, darling. Sissy, darling. Don't try anymore. I love you, Sissy. I've loved you since the first day I saw you. If you had told me this before, that you had only stolen, we would have been married, and I would be helping you. I'm going to help you now, I... The dog is after me! The dog is after me! They were after you, dear. But Providence and the dog have saved you. I believe in and trust you now, sister. And dear, love you so much. But you must go now. Hurry. Go somewhere and hide. Send me word. Stay hidden until I can arrange to slip you away. And remember now and always, sister, that I love you. Love you. and beat it. Beat it? Hey, black man, don't shoot down this way till I make my exit. You need to be scared, you fool rabbit. I've been looking for you for some time, Peter. Didn't know you was back. Why have you been looking for me? No, nah, you don't. Turn around and march on to Dogtown. What for? I'm going to drop you in the main street where all the jigs can... It's been bragging about you and Sissy can see. 
I ain't gonna take no from dingling from nobody. Huh? You oughtn't shoot, Peter. His mammy just died. Didn't she won't worry none. Turn around. And when I said march, you march. Taint Chan, right about face, march. What do you do with the gun, Tump? I thought it was against the law to carry one. You can carry them if you don't keep them here. Mr. Bob told me that when he gave my gun to me. So he gave it back, eh? After giving you 30 days for carrying it, he frees you and gives it back. What for? I'm the devil do I know. And what's more, I don't care. All I know, I got it. And I was going to drill the daylight through you as soon as we get to dog top. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute, Tom. Bob's don't like me. I broke no laws and I'd have never done anything to him. But he wants me out of the way, so he gave you the gun, figuring you'd shoot me with it. I don't care nothing about Woofer. All I know, you done stole my gal, and I'm going to kill you for it. Come on, let's go. Come on. Tom, I'm not going to marry Sissy. I know you ain't, Peter. I mean, if you let me alone, I don't tend to. I'm, I ain't going to let you alone, Peter. You think it's the best thing to do, Tom? Shut your black mouth. What I care about what you said? You done wean Sissy away from me. She won't even speak to me. She won't even look at me. All on account of you. I ought to drop you right here and now. Go on, shut up. March. Go on. We going on the town. We going on. Go on. Now, none of that, none of that, boys. You'll probably hit the gal if you shoot. And I'll pick you off one at a time, a three-pack crew. <laughs> You're going up to the big house, gal. Peter, has Mr. Bob done arrested sissy? I don't know, Tom. Looks like it. For goodness sake, sis is rested. Mine and your little deal's off, Peter. We got the same sis. I wonder what she done done. She don't shoot crap, and she don't bootleg. No. Nah. Let's go to her home. Yeah. Hmm. I know she done something. I know she done something. You ain't never been in jail, is you, yellow boy? It sure ain't no place for a woman. It's no place for a woman. I hear that she done commit grand larceny and they're going to take her to the pen. Grand larceny? What's that? Dumb Bill. That taking more from the white folks at one time and that they expect me to take. Bill <laughs> <laughs> Dean. She took a brooch. They kept laying it around in her way. It, it was that, that Sam Arkwright who did it. He, he wanted her to. Oh, Peter, it's too terrible to tell. Time. <laughs> then last night, they had that old persimmon to watch her when she went to see you. They tended resting her then, but Sissy took the dog with her, and he run him away. <laughs> But when she stole home a while ago to get a bite to eat, Priscilla was watching and runs and gets Bob. Oh, Peter, what do we do? What do we do, Peter? I'll save your sissy. I'll save your sissy. Don't be afraid. It's tough. And eyes are coming. Teacher, right about face. Now, over the top. Peter. The accident up at Jonesboro last night, Peter. Yes? Yeah. Tom Pack got killed. Jail delivered. Sissy Dildy in escaped. But I'll get her, Peter. Dawson Bonds. <laughs> 
always gets his Negroes, Peter. Yeah, always. Now, me and the sheriff, we knew Tump pretty well. I mean, no, he'd never figure out a scheme to free that girl like that. But we figured as how it might have popped into the head of an educated Negro like you, Peter. Yeah. If you're hinting at me, I can assure you I had nothing to do with it, or knew nothing of any such plan. I don't know the girl escaped you told me just now. Maybe. You know, I've been thinking a lot about you lately, Peter. And if I was you, yeah, I'd just drift along quietly out of this here town. You know, white folks and Negroes got along pretty well around here till you got back from school. But since you got back, a lot of unpleasant things have been happening. Now, for instance, the report got around last night it was you who got killed instead of Tump Peck. I'm an old Captain Renfrew heard it. He just up and naturally dropped dead. Oh, no. Captain Renfrew's not dead. You know, Peter, things continue to happen around here, and we don't like it. Now, there ain't room in this here town for the white folks and an educated Negro like you. So if I was you, I'd just drift on away quietly, Peter. Quiet. When the moon beams on a fire, the fire in the moon born. That night the mind will give a turn down with the sense of Cinderella. Come on, a man, a fella, that's how it was born. Everybody's talking, down about the water shore. Cats are crying and saying praise, all the children are in the room. And can you feel the hot bell? Who got the moon to take down? I'll give you a hot call, don't go far in the moon born. Just cry to big blues, everybody high too. When the moon's on the bow, oh, that town in the dark, they praise the mighty forgiver. Cut down things in the river, cold water made them quiver. That town in the river, everybody's so damn cute. Rest swan is sure, catch a crazy friend, or pop a chunk of donkey. It's gonna clean on a hot brown, who brought that move to Jig Town? I'll give you a hot brown. Yes. 
Nancy, my poor sister, whatever happened? How come you're here like this? I'm, I'm a thief, Ida May. I stole a brooch at Mrs. Arkwright's house. And when I failed to meet Sam as he asked me to, he swore to warrant, and Bob's arrested me. They put me in jail. and made them let me go, and I ran away. When I'd gone about a block, I heard a shot, and turning around, saw Tump fall dead. took me to the country and kept me hid for three days. Then one night I slipped out and saw the persimmon peeping through the bushes. I didn't want to get the Warfields into trouble, so after midnight, I slipped away. down the next day and almost starved, I went up to a cabin in the woods to ask for food. When about two miles down the road, I heard the dogs. The bloodhounds were on my trail. It must have been around midnight. I could tell for the moon was shining. I had run through creeks, swamps, over mountains, but I couldn't get rid of those dogs or the persimmon. I decided to give up. It seemed so hopeless. But as I turned, I saw the ugly face of the persimmon rise up behind a bush, and turning, he calls loudly, Here she am, Mr. Bob, Dot and caught up with her. I went suddenly crazy. I decided to run until I dropped dead, and turning, I flew. I don't know how far I had gone, when suddenly I found myself in the middle of a wide, paved highway where I stopped. I heard a truck, and before persimmon and the dogs could catch up, I looked and the driver was Tump's brother. Sissy! Why, you dirty... A dirty son of a gun. Well... He'll never betray another Negro. You poor little thing. He 
drop me off outside, but there's no use, Ida May. What you mean there's no use, honey? I'll have you fixed up in a jiffy, and you'll be off to Chicago before you can say... <gasps> I told you there was no use. It's Bob's in the lawn. They're going to take me back to Hooker's Den. <laughs> Sissy, is she here? Oh, Sissy, my darling. It's no use, Peter. I'm a thief and no good. Don't let Mr. Bob take me on back to Hooker's Den and hang me. Mr. Bob won't be here. No one's going to hang you. Instead, Sissy, we're going to get married and live happy until we die. Here, Adam, eh? We just telegram I just received. Peter Steinert, care of Western Union, Nashville, Tennessee. Find Sissy and bring her home. Everything has been adjusted. Mrs. Alfright canceled the warrant Sam took out for her arrest and sent Sam away to a reform school. They probated Captain Renfrew's will today and a great surprise awaits you. So find Sissy and bring her home at once. Wait, here's some more. They found the persimmon body on the road to Nashville. He'd been shot three times. Nobody knows who did it. They're trucking. Let's be happy again for Sissy. Poor Sissy. Yes, Adam, let's celebrate for Sissy. Of course, she suffered so much. And when they filed old Renfro's will for probate, what do you reckon they found? What? That he left everything that he owned. That Negro, Peter Siner. Uh, the devil, you say? Every last dime, including the stock in the bank, and he owned 90% of it. It looks like the end of Henry Hooker to me. Well, I'll be jiggered. And what's Siner going to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so funny about it? <laughs> He's going to turn old Renfrew's mansion on the hill into a seminary for Negro gals. And that 3,000-acre plantation with all its buildings and equipment into an industrial school for colored boys. How does that strike you, Tom Witt? Well, dear, now that we're married and you're mine forever, we'll drive to Chicago for a brief honeymoon. Been back here to begin our last year. Yes, please. But listen to this, Tom. While you was away, Siner made a speech right here in Courthouse Square. Most of the audience is white, the best people in town, and some come over from Jonesbury to hear him, mind you. White people, the best white people. What did he say? Ah, uh, plenty. Among the many things he did say was that he intended to break up Lothan on Hobbit's Corner. That it was a nice old to the town and a breeding spot for <laughs> shiplessness. So he proposed to the city council that Bob's be ordered to arrest every man, especially Negroes, 
found loafing there for more than 10 minutes. What did he propose to do with them? Oh, he had that all figured out in advance. <laughs> yeah, he had everything figured out and in advance. Yeah. He wants to arrest all Negroes, so, and place them in custody and on parole of the school for an indefinite period. And during which time he guaranteed to work them so hard on that farm until they'd be too tired to loaf. And he intends to make good farmers out of them before he turns them <laughs> loose. <laughs> well, how'd the audience take it? The white audience. He was up. Uh, they applauded every few seconds and crowded around him when he was through and said that if he needed any money, help, help or money or anything he needed, just to call on them. <laughs> but the biggest surprise of the evening was on the part of Bob. <laughs> Bob, listening to a speech for China, <laughs> and bowed to him and smiled when it was over. And Hooker? Oh, Hooker, well, he couldn't take it. <laughs> <laughs>